point human factors number three divine supernatural empowerment and then number four is God himself as a factor the help of God can we begin now the starting point of every financial journey the starting point of every financial journey is an awareness of the following the starting point from point a to whatever points that you seek to be the starting point please listen carefully because many believers the average believers orientation about finance is just a business to do and then profits to make or some investments having a return or a job receiving a salary or whatever it is this this is a very wrong is a loser's approach immediately i'm telling you up front if you approach the subject of finances just by thinking of what to do and then versus what you have you will lose eventually it is not wrong there is a place for them but it must be line upon line are we together precept upon precept so the starting point of every financial journey is an awareness of the following number one that it is the will of God for you to prosper financially please write it down the starting point of your financial journey is an awareness that number one it is the will of God for you to prosper as simple as this statement is there are many believers who are still fighting that mental that internal battle as to whether in truth God desires that they prosper and because of the several teachings that are around the body of Christ today globally speaking for or against the subject of prosperity well-intentioned believers want to make sure that they are on a safe side they do not want to do anything that displeases the Lord and from a sincere standpoint they want to be sure that they are on the Lord's side is it the will of God for you to prosper Proverbs 10 22 let's turn there 10 22 Proverbs the Bible says the blessing of the Lord it make it rich the blessing of the Lord it make it rich and he added no sorrow with it may that be your testimony Amen. the blessing of the Lord it make it rich that word rich is not a parable it's not an idiom rich means rich it make it rich and added no sorrow with it scripture number two Deuteronomy 8:18. 818 are we together <clears throat> excuse me but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth notice power to get wealth notice power to get wealth who gives it God why that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day can we consider number three Isaiah 35 27 you must have the awareness that is the will of the Lord 27 27 not two. Isaiah 35 27 did I get that right let them shout for joy if I miss the scripture please find it for me that favor my righteous cause Psalms my apologies not Isaiah Psalms 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 35 27 it is let them shout continually thank you please correct that psalm 35 27 let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause that means if you are not one who favors his righteous cause he's not talking to you then he says let them say continually let the lord be magnified which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant is that in your bible yes first timothy chapter 6 and verse 17 will be the final scripture to establish this point the starting point of every financial journey is an awareness that number one it is the will of god for you and i to prosper here's what the bible says paul is charging timothy charge them that are rich in this world he says that they be not high-minded 
nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. And it says that God gives us richly. How many things? All things to enjoy. He's bringing a warning to those who are rich. He never talked about their wealth. He spoke about something that becomes a side effect of them being rich without God. He says them that are rich in this world. That means there is worldly, a worldly financial system and there is the kingdom financial system. Are we learning now? Say after me, it is the will of God for me to prosper financially. As simple and as childlike as this sounds, say it again. It is the will of God for me to prosper financially. Till the day I see the face of Jesus, I will never, never believe, never believe that God is the author of poverty or the one responsible for it or that God is happy when you are in a state where you are financially incapacitated. It is not in scripture. It is inconsistent with his nature. It is inconsistent with his ways. It is inconsistent with the very definition of love. So number one, the first awareness you must have if you want to prosper in the kingdom is that it is the will of God. Look up please. How many of you know that something happens to you when you verify that you are in the will of God? Believers who love Jesus do not want to find themselves outside of the will of God. And that's why in ancient times they would ask the Lord, should I pursue? And he would say, pursue. And the moment he gave that marching order, there was no stopping. They would pursue, they would overtake, and they would recover. Many believers are still wondering whether it is the will of God for them to prosper. I'm answering you from the lens of scripture. Absolutely. Is it the will of God for Koinonia to prosper? Yes. Is it the will of God for you to prosper in your family? Yes. As a man of God? Yes. As a businessman? Yes. As a believer? Yes. Orientation number two. The starting point of every financial journey is an awareness that number two, financial prosperity is one of the blessings that comes with loving and serving God. Please write this down. Financial prosperity is one of the blessings that comes with loving and serving God. Please underline loving and underline serving God. Financial prosperity. There are a number of blessings. The Bible calls them benefits. Psalm 103. When you read Psalm 103, there are five of them like you have been taught in this house. The Bible talks about them being his benefits. So the second orientation that you must have as a starting point to your journey to lasting wealth in the kingdom and by God is to understand that financial prosperity is one of the blessings that loving and serving God brings. The blessing that comes with loving God and serving God. Job 36, 11. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Say amen. amen. If they obey and serve him, one of the things that happened to the people of God every time they disobeyed God was that they suffered economically. There were a number of things that always happened to the Israel of God every time they violated his ordinances. Among them was they plunged back to lack and want are we together now there were times that they were afflicted in their health there were times that they lost their estate access to whatever place was given to them and every time god restored his people among the many things he did as proof that he had now come to be with them was that he restored them financially financial prosperity is one of the blessings of loving and serving God. I'm going to say something that will disturb you, but it is true. Show me a Christian who sincerely loves God with all his heart. Show me a Christian who is serving God sincerely and is still broke. There is something that Christian is not doing well. If it is the God of heaven you are serving, are we together? You love Jesus with all your heart, and you are serving him with all your heart genuinely, non-pretentiously. It is impossible to spend your life in financial pain. 
except if you have violated the least as aforementioned the ignorance of his laws you have not considered the human factors you have rejected willfully empowerment by God you have rejected the help of God otherwise anybody who truly loves Jesus and serves Jesus will eventually among all the blessings that loving Jesus brings eventually you will experience and in your lifetime you will taste of financial prosperity may that be your portion are you ready for number three is God helping someone already the third orientation that you must have as you begin an intentional journey towards experiencing God's supply in your life is that you must have watch this now watch this now you can have abundant financial resources I wrote here without knowing or loving the Lord write it that's not the end of the statement but just write because I'm dictating you can have abundant financial resources without knowing or loving the Lord comma you can have abundant financial resources without knowing or loving the Lord but the peace and fulfillment that comes with it only comes from God let me take it again you can have abundant financial resources without knowing the Lord and without loving the Lord but the peace hallelujah and fulfillment that comes with being financially blessed only on the line only please comes from God this is true that means you can be rich without God many today are rich without God there are billionaires who do not believe in Jesus there are millionaires in Naira and dollars who do not believe in Jesus there are occultic organizations that are worth billions of dollars who are directly antichrist so it is possible that you can listen carefully do not be surprised when you see unbelievers prosper do not be surprised when you see non-believers people who are vocally resistant to the gospel prosper our world is full of many people who have abundant financial resources some of them cause God to the face while they are prospering however the peace and fulfillment that comes with money only comes from God I can tell you that Proverbs 10 22 we read it earlier on we'll read it again the blessing of the Lord the Bible says make it rich then it does not stop there it says and he added no sorrow with it that means anybody who prospers you add something with it takes away something with it there are people who got money at the expense of their conscience there are people who got money at the expense of their allegiance you know you, they had to fraternize with occultic groups there are people today who have money but they cannot sleep they live in mansions but they sit on chairs all through the night because they cannot find sleep I can tell you this there are many wealthy people who live on injections and drugs because they cannot sleep they are owners of estates celebrated world over but dying alone no wonder you have even among the wealthy people who will start millions and billions in their accounts write letters and commit suicide why should a multi-millionaire why should a billionaire be committing suicide you would think with the presence of money there is let me tell you this there are problems that only come to your life because you are rich money solves other problems but the realm of wealth has its own problems and the problems that poor people have money can solve most of it but the problems that rich people have only God can solve it did you hear what I said the problems that poor people have money can usually solve most of it most poor people's problems is how to get uh, how do they say it now to get ends to meet but for a wealthy person most rich people their problems is not how to get uh, ends to meet no when you have a problem that money cannot solve you are in trouble because you will need God most poor people 
there are problems I can tell you. And poor here not being an insult, just a description of a state of living. Most poor people, the problems, 90% of a poor man's problem, I can tell you, can be solved with finances. Housing, food, health care, etc. But there are people who get to a realm where they have all the money and everybody within their realm also has money. At that point, what solves money is not, what solves their problem is not money again. So if you, be, if you get beguiled by social media and television to believe that just because people are flashing designers, driving the most expensive cars, living, having the most luxurious living, and sometimes even believers admire this and they say, God, but this is what I want now. Is it that you cannot give me? I've had the honor, and I say this with every sense of humility. I have met billionaires in dollars. I have spoken with very wealthy people. You do not want to know the problems that wealthy people have. For most wealthy people, one of their major problems is succession. The devil makes sure that most of them have foolish children. So by the time the people spend all that money, the man has billions, but he's crying and bleeding and saying, so everything I worked for, there is a foolish child waiting for me to die. And this child is going to blow up everything. And truly the child is waiting for the father to die. Have you seen billionaires who pass on to glory and in one year, their entire estate goes down? Hallelujah. When you meet very wealthy people, you will see some of them, their best friends are the cleaners in their houses. Not the owners of other companies because they live a lonely life. They can't share anything to anybody. And information that comes from them, leaking that information can be equal $10,000, $1 million. Everything about their life makes money, including their secrets. So they can't tell anybody. Are you learning now? They live a very lonely life. Very lonely life. They are everywhere, but they are alone. Their pictures are everywhere, but they are alone. They wake up in the night, inject themselves with all kinds of substances so that they can sleep for three or four hours. Wealth without God. Some of them are called James in Nigeria. They are called John in Europe. They are called Gabriel in Dubai. In one island, they are called another name. They have over 10, 20 passports depending on where they are because you don't know which government will fight you at any given time. So you have to be ready to run away. Kai, listen, if you ever admire wealth without God, may you grow enough to see fast because there are many, many people today. I hope you know that wealthy people are not angels. They are human beings. They have problems. They have problems. Solomon got into that state. When Solomon became wealthy, he, wisdom made him wealthy. But when he became so wealthy, he was lonely. He tried 700 wives. It didn't work. 300 concubines. It didn't work. He said, confessing his own sins, he said, everything my eyes saw. Do you know that, what that means? It's one great, you know, personality who had that problem. I don't know what they call it. Anything he saw, he would want to buy it. They had to hire a manager to control his appetites. True story. So you can tell him, sir, I know you have the money for this, but do you need it? So they give you three questions to answer before you buy anything. Because he has gotten to a point where it has manipulated his understanding. If he saw anything and did not buy it, he could lose sleep. There is a medical name for it. Hello? It can affect you because that realm, there are some sicknesses that don't affect other people. But let me tell you this. I'm not insulting you, my dear people. I'm just trying to tell you this, listen, that there are problems that only happen when you have money. And before you blindly admire people and ignore Jesus and say, don't worry, this man, our world is full of people today saying there are people who don't know Jesus and yet they are wealthy. You don't know the problems. Satan attacks everybody. 
So what do you think if you are Satan? Wouldn't you design a problem unique to rich people? You have seen what he does with poor people. What about rich people? Multiple identities. Some of those people you see have, they cannot sleep. Peace is one thing money cannot give. It can create an environment. But here's what Jesus said. John 14, 27. We're establishing the third point. Is God speaking to someone? It says, peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. There are other kinds of peace. But my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Are you saying that now? He said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to start your journey to finances. Just know that if you come to Jesus just because you want to make money, you will be disappointed. Because you will see people in your journey who do not respect Jesus. And they keep having money and ending their year. There are people who this year will be their most profitable year in business. And they hated Jesus more. Between January and, and December, their hatred for Jesus has multiplied. Just like their profits. So how do you explain such a thing? If you ever see any wealthy man on earth who became wealthy and rejected Jesus, there is a void in the heart of all men that only the size of God can fill. Did you hear that? There is a void in every man. Once you came from God, by God you are in the earth, there is a void that money cannot fill. There is a void that vacations, luxurious, five, seven star vacations cannot fill. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty, endless worth. Listen. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that grown run dry. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. This is what is missing in the wealth equation of many wealthy people. So they run to pastors. So they run to spiritualists. So they run to people and say, I have everything life can offer. But the joy that comes from Jesus, I do not have. The peace that comes from Jesus, I do not have. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you up front. You can prosper financially without God. But the peace and joy and fulfillment that is added to God's dimension of prosperity, no business can give you. No investment can give you. You don't get that one in a bank. You don't get that one in an institution. You only get it from a person. He's called the Prince of Peace. Are you learning? So for those of you who want to hustle and make it without God, and you are saying, God, I've served you, I've tried for you. Let me focus on my finances. I'm giving you an advice up front so that you are not disappointed the pursuit of wealth, the pursuit of money without God can give you the money, but with it you will miss something that will make the money useless. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have not seen any dead man carry his money out of the earth. Have you seen it? Not even the expensive coffin. Billionaires die, they enter the same ground. There is no special ground for billionaires. No matter who you are, by the time you die, is the same earth. On, you see, physically, we have VVVIPs, VIP services on earth. Where to enter, how to fly, how to eat, VIP plates, VIP whatever. There's no VIP grave. 
everybody goes to the ground. And you do not even know who you are lying on top. So if the only thing that you, you believe that you have money and you feel I don't need God. No. Peace. You see, we have to, this will even help you to know how to preach to wealthy people. If you want to preach to wealthy people and say God will take away all your financial problems, it's a wrong audience. They will not listen to you. That's why when Jesus called for the feast, all the rich people refused to come. You remember that our discussion? They refused. Another person said, I just married or I, I just bought something. If, and he said, go to those who are, have all these problems. And they came. There is something you can tell a wealthy man. The Prince of Peace can give you peace. These 127 businesses you have around the world that is keeping you awake, even though wealthy. You are worth $1 billion, but you are owing $5 billion. Now, there is the Prince of Peace who gives men sleep. Are we together now? Number four. What is the fourth orientation you must have if you want to be sustainably wealthy? Can we continue? Wealth and abundance in the kingdom. I said it as a preamble, but now I'm structuring it into the point. Wealth and abundance in the kingdom is a function of laws, human factors, divine empowerment and the help of God this is the fourth thing you need to know laws in the kingdom is a function an interplay of laws human factors divine empowerment and the God factor don't choose the laws alone don't choose the human factors alone don't choose divine empowerment alone choose God ultimately but respect the system he designed to. Do you notice that the four points I gave you, people have been independently wealthy, isolating any one of them. There are those who have been wealthy only by laws and principles. There are those who have been wealthy only by human factors. For instance, relationship and corruption. There are those who have been wealthy only by divine empowerment. An anointing came into your life and you prophesied to someone and the person said, I'll be a partner with you and your ministry forever. You don't know jack about finances, but you have money in your hand. And there are others who God just decided to bless. Or, well, not decided really. For by whatever reason, their alignment to God, they just secured his favor in their lives. But sustainable wealth comes when you can combine all this together. Now watch this. When you make jollof rice, you mix all kinds of ingredients together with the rice am I right but imagine that you have a table full of pepper and salt and onion and rice then you decide to eat the pepper then swallow the salt look up please and then you carry the onion and eat it then you carry the dry rice like that and eat it and say the most important thing is that it, it will combine when it gets there is that jollof rice you see the problem with the body of Christ what you want to produce is jollof rice. Your ingredients are right, but others are eating pepper alone. Others are taking salt alone. Others are taking the seasonings alone. Others, it's even the dry rice themselves they are eating. I say, why doesn't it taste like jollof rice? Because there is something you must do to eat first. This is what I'm helping you do. Are we together now? So wealth and abundance. This is where the fight between preachers and businessmen have come. Businessmen will tell you, listen, forget about all these preachers lying and deceiving you. You just be sincere, be valuable, and you'll be rich. And people will come and say, it's true. When I stopped listening to these nonsense men of God are preaching, and I now became serious, had a business, I now became a millionaire. And then on the other hand, you will see someone say, I don't know anything about business I've never gone to any financial school. I don't know anything. All I know is as a man of God, I preached, God raised somebody, gave me a house and a car. And now you are confused because both of them are prosperous. Wealth and abundance in the kingdom is a function of laws, human factors, divine empowerment. Human factors, for instance, 
if God helps you and your uncle is responsible for contracts in a company and he just calls you and he says from here to here I will give you the contract you are the one supplying this you can become wealthy even with the, the serious ignorance just because a human factor worked to your advantage in the Bible we call it the law of time and chance and the Bible says it happens to them all there are people who are wealthy today not because they really understand the laws when time and chance came to them they were able to take advantage of that opportunity let me give you number five are we learning number five please very quickly the starting point of every financial journey is an awareness that number five this will be a shift in your thinking but I want you to listen to it carefully God does not decide who becomes wealthy or who remains poor write it down please God does not decide who becomes wealthy or who remains poor God does not decide who becomes wealthy or who remains poor no if you remain poor in your life it is not God that chose it that way if you decide to be prosperous it's not that God uniquely chose you regardless you're participating in the laws that make for prosperity Deuteronomy 30 15 to 20 please follow carefully give it to us please Deuteronomy 30 15 see I have said before you this day follow carefully now koinonia life and good death and evil 16 in that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways to keep his commandments and his status and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply are you seeing that now and the Lord your God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest and pass to it 17 but if thine hand turn away thy heart turn away so that thou will not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them 18 I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go and possess it 19 I call heaven watch this now and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you koinonia life and death I have set before you blessing and cursing therefore I won't force you choose life I've shown you life with its benefits I've shown you death and curses with their whole, their limitations choose life I can only advise you but I cannot force you that both thou and thy seed may live verse 20 it says that thou mayest love the Lord thy God obey his voice cleave unto him this is what choose life means for he is thy life and the length of thy days thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to Abraham Isaac to Jacob to give them listen to me ladies and gentlemen God does not decide who becomes wealthy or who remains poor the Bible lets us know in Proverbs 22 and verse 2 very disturbing but truthful scripture the rich and the poor meet together the Lord is the maker of them all God did not make them so but he made them all you would think that because of this scripture the Bible would just say men live together but the Bible separates them into two groups the rich and the poor it says God made them all but they made themselves either rich or poor can I give you the final orientation so God does not decide who becomes wealthy don't see people who are getting wealthy and say God just decided to bless them God just decided to bless the man of God decided to bless the family and we are just cause no God does not work like that six and the final orientation then I will now show you how money in the kingdom works how wealth in the kingdom works write this down please kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire or a billionaire please write this I want you to start that statement it is going to be a big deliverance for someone right now kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire or billionaire it is about having supplies that meets your needs supports the kingdom and makes you a blessing to your world let me take it again 
Kingdom wealth, please believe us, hear this, is not about being a millionaire or a billionaire. Write that, then I continue. Kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire or being a billionaire. It is about having supplies that meet your needs, supplies that empowers you to support the kingdom, supplies that empower you to bless your world. That is the goal of kingdom wealth. One last time, kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire. Body of Christ, hear me. Kingdom wealth is not just about being a millionaire or being a billionaire. It is about having supplies that meets your needs, empowers you to support the work of the kingdom, and then empowers you to be a blessing to your world. I need to say this because there is an orientation that was sincerely sold into the church that the, the blessing of the Lord is only speaking in your life financially now to the degree that you become a multi-millionaire in Naira and dollars, multi-billionaire in Naira and dollars. So there are people who are on a wild campaign to make sure that by all means they prove through their lives that the grace for kingdom wealth is upon them. The assignment of God is not just to make men millionaires or billionaires. Being a millionaire and a billionaire is a byproduct of your diligence, a byproduct of purpose, a byproduct of your desire to have for the sake of your comfort. Are we together? For the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of blessing the world. Whatever amount that adds up to, if at all you can give it a monetary value, that becomes what you really need. There are people on earth, if they, based on their assignment, based on their mindset, their level of alignment to their lives and the kingdom, if they ever prosper beyond $100,000, it becomes the reason why they would die. Are we together? Because there is no assignment in their life that necessitates being wealthy beyond $100,000. No purpose in their lives that needs to be funded with that degree of wealth. Are we together now? Yes. Imagine with me, for instance, that you came to visit someone and it is only you. You didn't come with any other person. And then they put a buffet on the table for you. All kinds of things. The whole table is full of food, but it's only for you. How many of you know that the visitor does not, or the owner of the house does not expect you to eat everything? That buffet is a sign of honor. You are given the liberty to pick a little here. By the time I fill my table with food and only you eat everything, there is a spirit eating with you. Because no human being under normal you know what I'm talking about? I mean table from this to this. You sat down there and kept eating, eating until you finish. No, no, no. Anything unusual is spiritual. Anything unusual, including eating something beyond your size. <laughs> are we together now? If you are with me, say amen. amen. Kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being a millionaire. There's nothing wrong with being a billionaire. Are we together now? It is just a name given to you by reason of a status you attain financially. That's, that's just it. What matters to God is not that you're a millionaire or billionaire. What matters to God is that by obeying his principles, you attain a level where you can live a life of dignity. Are we together now? And then you have abundant financial resources to support the program of God. My goodness, I'm coming there shortly. It will be one of the major reasons why you must desire the blessing of the Lord upon your life. There is so much to be done for the kingdom. So much to be done. Many believers have no idea what it costs to do the work of the kingdom. There are a few people here who are pastors. There are a few people here who are church leaders. And you will agree with me that I, you always hear me say that the name of Jesus is so heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Hallelujah. 
God's kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire. A millionaire with no vision, kingdom vision. A billionaire with no vision, kingdom vision, is one who is only piercing himself with multiple sorrows. What gives value to the money you have is the opportunity to live a comfortable life by it. Number two, the opportunity to advance the program of God by it and then to help become a blessing to your world. These six thoughts are very powerful and I do not want you to forget them. It is the will of God for you and I to prosper. Financial prosperity is one of the blessings that come with loving and serving Jesus. That you can have abundant financial resources without knowing or without loving the Lord. But the peace and fulfillment that comes with it only comes exclusively from God. Number four, that wealth and abundance in the kingdom is a function of laws, is a function of human factors, it's a function of divine empowerment and it's a function of God, the help, the God factor. Number five, God does not decide who becomes wealthy. Please listen. God does not decide who remains poor. He's given men the liberty to take advantage of the provisions that he has put in place to decide their financial destinies. Finally, number six, kingdom wealth is not just about being a millionaire or being a billionaire. It is about having supplies that meet your needs. Watch this. By this definition, for someone, your entire financial equation can be that God would have helped you to a point where you have cash flow enough to live a decent life with you and your children and then to be able to ensure that something from your resources, are we together now, comes into the Kingdom Come project and then that you are able to be a blessing to your world. You can choose as an act of your will that I want to love God and I'm not interested in being a billionaire and a millionaire. I want resources enough to take care of myself, fund the gospel as much as is within my power and to be a blessing to people. It is a choice and God will respect it. Hallelujah. Because there are people in church who God has been faithful to. But because of a narrative that has been sold, that until you see millions of dollars and billions of dollars, you are not yet there. If your passion is because of the kingdom, you are fine. But let me submit to you, within the boundary of modesty and a decent life, you do not need so much money. I know you won't believe this, but it's true. Within the boundary of decency and a modest life, as far as effective living is concerned, you do not need so much. Most of the problems of people revolve around housing, upkeep, transportation, maybe taking care of children. And when all those things are sorted, you will find out that truly, as far as your personal life is concerned, most of the money we have is in the bank and it's been in the bank for years. That's to tell you, you really did not need it. It's there. It's been there for some for five years, 10 years. There are people who have money in the bank for 20 years. They've not withdrawn one tenth of it. They don't need it. They are just aware that it is there. Are we together? There are people who have passed on to glory today and left millions and billions of naira. Their families will never know it's been there. I'm sure it goes to the bank eventually. It's not about being a millionaire. My desire is not to be a millionaire or to be a billionaire. My desire is to have as much ab financial abundance and freedom that can allow me live a decent and a meaningful life, can allow me be a massive contributor to God's end time program, and can allow me be a blessing to my world. If that assignment demands that I become a billionaire, then my pursuit to be a billionaire is not a loss-driven pursuit. It came as a derivative, as a conclusion. Are we together? That there is a budget that state has to fund. There are people jumping, I'm a financial apostle, I'm a kingdom financier, and they don't know God, they don't love God, they are greedy, they are not givers, they don't even understand his program. It doesn't work that way. The idea is not bragging that I'm a millionaire, I'm a billionaire, and this is the cancer that is destroying our generation. Most people just believe, oh, I'm a millionaire, I'm a billionaire. What does that mean? Do you know that if you have an assignment 
and in your lifetime, part of your assignment is to supply $1 billion to fund the gospel. If at the end of your life, you make $800 million, you failed in your assignment. Because with respect to your assignment, the grace to attain that status, are we together now? It was part of the equipping of your assignment. You just did not maximize it. Let me tell you the truth. One of my financial desires is that a time will come in my life, in my lifetime, I will write out the list of ministries around the world and all, I will employ people and their work is just to be signing and sending checks. This one to North Korea. Yes. This one to this place. Oh, there's some missionary there. Okay, this one. Calculate the school fees of the children from primary school to university. And I said, dear evangelist, do not worry about sending your children to school again. Somebody's assignment, your faithfulness has made God to give someone an assignment of raising your children for you. That real estate people will rise up who will do a 2,000 housing estate and 200 of it, a tithe of it, goes to the kingdom. Not a tithe of the money, a tithe of the house. That you write the list of serious, visionary, disciplined mission agencies, men and women of God to say, sir, we have watched you for five years. You are a man that loves God with all your heart. Can we help you? We know that you are a preacher, but one day you also want to have a house. You also want to live this life so that you are not distracted. Take. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, we understand that you are the way your life is. You are traveling from pillar to post. You are a missionary. Today you are in this mission agency for six months. When are you going to get the chance to gather money together to build? So God sent me. This is my own assignment to keep your assignment going. Is someone learning now? And I truly believe that in my lifetime, there are already people doing this, but there are few, just one or two. But I believe there is going to be a sudden emergence. May it be from Koinonia. Young men and women with no bribe, no killing, no stealing, no human sacrifices, no ritual to remove body parts and make money with it. And these are people who will roll under the ground. You will think that they are preachers and they will tell you, I'm just a kingdom financier. My assignment is that you fire on. If the devil wants to afflict your children, they call you from a mission field. Don't worry. There are warriors waiting for you already. This is the orientation I want to give you. Versus, ah, this is a jeep. I claim it. This is somebody's house. Oh God, remove the person and give me the house. Bible said the wealth of the wicked. And you know, and sometimes we misquote scripture and make mistakes that only make us look foolish before the whole world. How do you come and stand in front of somebody's fence who suffered and built his house, labored for 30 years, and your prayer is that the person will go out so that you will enter? That can happen. But that's not how God works. I said before you life and death. Hallelujah. With all due respect, imagine that as I'm teaching now, an usher will just smuggle a quiet basket to you and is written and <laughs> drop something. As a man... Are you seeing that now? Suddenly you will lose concentration. You've heard me say it. One of the reasons why I'm able to preach is because I love Jesus, but also because there is food on my table. If there is no food on my table, only God knows the kind of messages that would have come that was not from the throne. Yes, sir. And it would be evil of me to have bread on my table and not be sure that there's also bread on your own table. When both of us have bread on our table, we can eat and give thanks to the one who blesses all men. And we can take from it and make sure that others too have that bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the privilege of God's grace, God has helped us and granted us the, the opportunity to extend hands of blessings to many people whose destinies otherwise would have been destroyed. Families, people, there are people today who can go to school. There are people today who can eat. Christmas is on its way coming. There are people today who are happy. They will enjoy the memory of the birth of Jesus because someone is alive and empowered to do it. It takes more than having a good heart. It must translate from your heart to your hands to the world. 
And before I go into teaching you how wealth works in the kingdom now, I'm praying for you that number one, God will purify your heart. Listen, and, and, and I don't mean to be sarcastic. I'm speaking to everybody, but particularly my generation. I know that there is a disaster on its way to happen if God does not help. Many young men right now are determined to make it by crook or by hook. They have vowed under God, if it means removing someone's head, I will remove it. If it means removing someone's kidney, I will pluck it out, even if it's my mother, my father, my sister. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you for someone who is watching me, there is a better, more superior kingdom way than killing people. Someone will leave the market going home and enter a car, and they will lay that person into the bush, butcher the person like an animal, bring out parts, and on their way to a herbalist somewhere who had promised them that if you can bring a human heart, a human brain, or bring a baby, I will give you some money. And the man who is saying that is still poor. We only give what we have, such as I have. So I'm speaking to someone right now. I sense in my heart because you see, believers are loving people, but because of our naivety, you know, as a believer, your whole life is around church. And most believers do not know the things that are out there. And because of financial pressure, many believers are beginning to bend to some of these formulas unknowingly. Listen to what I want to teach you now. Killing, stealing, and destroying to be wealthy is the way of the devil. And I'm speaking to every young man here. Stop calling yourself a hustler. That is a curse. The Bible did not give you that name. There are names the Bible gave you. We've not run out of those options. Call yourself light. Call yourself salt. Call yourself a king. Call yourself a priest. Isaiah 8.20 And if they do not speak after this manner, it is because there is no light in them. There is a way light carriers speak. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. As for me, I've made a decision that I will never be poor. It's a decision I made. Satan was around the corner. God was there on his throne. I was there. The power to choose that God gave me and I announced it before principalities and powers. That in the name of Jesus, even if not for my sake, for the sake of koinonia, for the sake of the name of Jesus, for the sake of one soul tied to my life, are we together? When you have this mentality, your approach to wealth now moves from carnality to purpose. From carnality to purpose. So it's not just jeep, estates, oil and gas, Louis Vuitton. Gucci, wonderful, but you have a more superior orientation. And I'm saying this especially to the gentlemen because it looks like the challenge in our world today is just make it, show it, and derive the fulfillment from it. So people lie today. They stand behind aircrafts they have never entered. They snap, they put online, behind cars. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just saying that pressure is unnecessary. Why fake what can be real? There's no point faking it. There is a realm where that becomes a reality indeed. Is someone ready now? I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, open my eyes yet again. What I'm about to show you now, open my eyes. Please pray. As you are praying for some of you, remember mama at home. Remember your father. Remember missionaries. Remember the gospel. Remember the kingdom. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Yes, Lord, it is your desire to lift me. A gentleman is praying. Zaria is praying. UK is praying. Canada, America. Go ahead, Koinonia Global. Pray, body of Christ. Take a minute to pray. Go ahead.
in Jesus mighty name we have prayed all right fasten your seat belts and let's see how God will help us Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 Ecclesiastes 10 15 let's read together please write and then read Ecclesiastes 10 15 ready want to read please the labor of the foolish 